Whether you are looking to upgrade your current machine to a spindle or you're trying to figure out if a spindle or a compact router is best for you to be able to start your CNC journey with, I've got 10 of the main differences between hobbyist level CNC routers when it concerns a compact router versus a spindle. First and foremost, power and torque. That is going to be your biggest difference. Spindles come in different power versions. You can get a 220 volt or a 110 volt and compact routers come in 110 volts. The voltage does not directly correlate with the amount of power that is behind it. It, but obviously if you have a 220 volt motor it is going to have a little bit more punch behind it and the main thing that, that torque converts into is how deep in the material you're able to make your cuts the main handicap of a lot of hobbyist level CNC machines is the rigidity of the machine itself therefore most of the time it really doesn't matter if you have a spindle or a compact router because if you're trying to take deeper cuts it doesn't matter if your machine starts binding up so when you're able to start off with a high quality machine that is very rigid that's when you realistically can look at if your speed is going to matter. Every single material that you're going to be cutting on your machine is going to have a specific feed rate and speed that is going to correlate with the type of cut that you're getting on your CNC machine. The reason that the majority of these hobbyist level CNC routers use a Makita router rather than a DeWalt or another type is the variability of the speed on it itself. That means the little dial on top that goes from 1 to 10, if you're moving that around, you're directly changing the RPM. Whereas most of the time spindles have a wider range of RPM so if you can take it a lot lower which means that milling non-ferrous metals like aluminum, copper, or brass are a lot more achievable with a spindle although they can still be achieved on a compact router. So precision and accuracy. I think that this has a lot to do with the bearings in the motor housings themselves and what type of bearings are used. And I think a lot of this also comes down to the specific machine that you're attaching your router or your spindle onto, but that's something to consider when looking into this. I personally believe that a good high quality spindle, you are going to get more accurate results than a compact router. Number four, noise and vibration. This is something that gets brought up a lot in the forums about how just quieter a spindle is than a compact router and they're completely correct it is considerably quieter the only drawback to that is if you're using dust collection on your machine it doesn't really matter that much because your dust collector is normally considerably louder than your compact router or your spindle ever would be but i do have to say that for me when i'm not using my dust collector when i'm specifically shooting youtube videos and showing how something cuts having a water-cooled spindle is so nice because it really is like deceptively quiet. Um, the whole process is way more enjoyable because you don't have a very large compact router just whizzing in your ear the entire time. But for most people, it doesn't really matter because a dust collector is going to be drowning it all out anyways. Number five, tool change and bit compatibility. So when you're looking at changing your tools, this is a very large difference. A compact router is going to be able to accept quarter inch size bits and then you can get a collet reducer that makes it so that you can accept eighth inch bits. The nice thing about the majority of spindles that you're going to be looking into is they're going to have ER20 collets, which means that the collet can easily change in and out and you can have bits all the way up to half inch in diameter, which is a game changer. On both of mine, when it considers the compact router and the spindle itself, you can change out with wrenches. Hopefully soon I'm going to be changing out my spindle to an ATC spindle when somebody figures out the automatic tool changing process for the Winfinity Masso series. And that means that I will no longer have to bring out wrenches to be able to change my tools. It will automatically change things out. So a spindle is something that is going to be able to help you do that, where a compact router is never going to be able to have automatic tools tool changes ever. Six, the size and the weight. That is something that you need to look into because a compact router is considerably lighter than an actual spindle is. That's something that you need to look into when you're looking at your specific machine. I use Onefinity CNC machines, which I personally don't think are going to have any issue when it concerns the size and the weight of these compact routers versus the spindles, but there are some hobbyist level machines out there that are not going to react well if you're going to slap a spindle on the Z axis and expect things to go really well. Seven is cost. If you're just now getting to the hobbyist level CNC game and you're seeing how quickly things can rack up as far as price, don't get a spindle. 
If it is not in your budget, do not get a spindle. A compact router costs around $100, whereas this specific plug and play spindle costs around $1,000. You can get a spindle on your machine for considerably cheaper, and that has to do with you actually going in and like soldering things, stuff that is way beyond me personally, which is why I went for the plug and play version from PWNCNC. If you're looking for a plug and play version, check them out. I'll have them linked down in the description. I also have a 5% off coupon if that's the route that you're looking to go but i don't think that everybody needs a spindle and that's for sure like i said if it's in your budget 100 no brainer spindle all the way if it's not in your budget i've used a compact router to be able to make tens of thousands of dollars with my hobbyist desktop level cnc machine and i have been completely happy with it switching over to a spindle i've seen how much better it is but that comes with a cost i wonder if y'all can hear that my compressor just kicked on Eight is router bit compatibility. So I know that we just talked about the size of the router bits, but also the type of bits that you can use. And specifically, I'm talking about flattening procedures for this. With a compact router, you're just not gonna be able to push as big of a bit as you're going to be able to with a spindle. For the majority of people, that's not going to be a massive issue. I personally think that like the flattening process, it doesn't really matter to me the amount of time that it takes. It really matters like the end result that I'm achieving. So for me, that's not too big of a deal, but for some people, the bigger the bit, the better. So there you go. Number nine, cooling system. So for the compact routers, you're gonna run into air-cooled systems. That is where it is drawing air from the very top, pushing it through the motor, and then out through the bottom. That's why when you're cutting your chips, if you don't have dust collection on, all the chips are being dispersed across your workpiece, away and out. That was my air compressor kicking off, so hopefully the audio is better. Is the audio better? Hmm. Now for spindles, you've got two different cooling options. Air cooling, which once again is drawing air from the top and then out from the bottom, and then liquid cooling, which for me, I'm using RV antifreeze in mine, but essentially you have two different tubes that are coming down that you're going to route with your wires away from the CNC machine itself, and that is going to push liquid through your router, and that is going to carry the heat away from the router that it is generating. It is incredibly efficient. It also makes it incredibly quiet because it doesn't have a fan inside the motor that is having to pull air in and out. Also, as you're cutting, it means that the chips at the very bottom are not being dispersed. They're staying where they're at. So when you're considering dust collection, it is not fighting against itself. So normally when you have a dust collector, it is trying to pull chips away while your router, if it's air cooled, is pushing chips down. So it's pushing air down and pulling air up, which is slightly fighting against itself. Normally this doesn't matter if you have a quality dust collector like my Oneida Supercell Turbo, but if you're using something cheaper like a shop vac, this can be where you're running into a little bit of an issue. So if you're looking for noise reduction as well as just better heat dissipation overall, I would say that liquid cooling is the way to go. Just make sure that you really understand how you're gonna route your wires. When I first hooked mine up, that was my biggest source of anger <laughs> during the whole process is not having the correct tube. So if you are going liquid cooling, definitely use silicone tubes and I would for sure make sure that you're able to route it into a drag chain or something like that. Liquid cooling creates a little bit different of a process, but it's not like trying to liquid cool like your PC at home. Uh, it's just a few different considerations that you need to make so that it all works correctly. And number 10 is integration and control. So that is a huge creature comfort, and this is gonna be different depending on the type of CNC machine that you have. So my Journeyman X50, I have my compact router on it. Every time that I start up my program, I need to make sure that I'm physically turning the router on and I'm changing the RPM for its dial. Now that dial is famous for being super finicky and changing while it's cutting. So there are some third party stuff out there that you can like have these little like stickers and stuff. I normally just put a piece of blue tape over mine and that makes it so that the dial doesn't shift around. Now on the spindle side of things in the Masso controller, whenever I set up my program in CarveCo Maker, it automatically assigns the RPM for the bit that I'm using. That means when I click go on my program, it turns the spindle on for five seconds and then it starts the program. If it needs to change things as I'm going, it automatically changes the RPM on the fly as the program is running, which is a huge thing. The Masso controller itself also will do half of that for a compact router, which means that you plug your router into the controller and it will automatically turn on and off your router for you 
which is a huge thing. I can't tell you how many times I've pressed go on my CNC and forgot to turn on the router and then it just kind of like broke a bit because it thinks that the router's on. That's my X50. Now the Masso version of the Onefinity is smart enough where it can turn on your CNC router, but it cannot change your RPM level. So you're still gonna have to physically change the dial on that because it is a physical change that is needing to happen for that compact router. Whereas the spindle, it can all be programmed completely in your software before you ever start carving. That is a huge creature comfort when it concerns a spindle versus a compact router. But like I said, it's just a creature comfort. If you're running this thing every single day and your business is depending on it, 100%. That is going to knock out so much time and effort in every single stage of the design and manufacturing process. So I would 100% get a spindle. But if you're just somebody who every once in a while is going out into the garage and cutting something out and $1,000 is not really in the budget when you're looking at your hobby right now, start off with a compact router, understand its limitations, and then maybe later graduate up to a spindle. If you're looking to graduate into a spindle or if you're looking to start off your journey with a spindle, PWNCNC makes an awesome one. And you can go down into the description below or you can check out my 5% off discount. They've got them for a ton of different CNC machines available on the market today. And it truly is plug and play. I'm extremely happy with mine. Ever since I did my Masso review, I've been getting a ton of questions about how happy I am with the router versus the spindle. And hopefully this video will help clear that up a lot for a few of y'all out there who are wondering kind of what the differences are. Now, if you're new to the channel, this is how long it actually took me to create this video itself. At the very end of the year, I'm gonna be adding up how long all of my videos took and I'm gonna put that against my Google AdSense so that I can find out my hourly rate for the channel. Also, I am so thankful for all these Patreon members who are supporting me over on Patreon. If you like the channel and you wish to support it more, doing that on Patreon as well as going to cnclater.com where I have CNC files, that is by far the best ways to be able to support me. I really appreciate it, y'all. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you and see y'all later. Bye.